quantum computing, Grover's algorithm. In this notebook, I have tried explained implementing Grover's search algorithm using Qiskit. It is quantum algorithm devised in 1996. It searches unsorted database. It searches from n number of element in root n evaluations using Oracle. Oracle is a black box where you can pass queries to it and get the answers from it. You have likely heard that one of the many advantages a quantum computer has over a classical computer is its superior speed searching databases. Grover's algorithm demonstrates this capability. This algorithm can speed up an unstructured search problem quadratically, but its uses extend beyond that. It can serve as a general trick or subroutine to obtain quadratic runtime improvements for a variety of other algorithms. This is called the amplitude amplification trick. Grover's search algorithm solves the problem of an unstructured search. When there is n number of possible input values, the classical algorithm recurries O, N, evaluations while the Grover's algorithm requires roughly O, dollar backslash SQRT, N, dollar, evaluations. The algorithm can be considered generic as it does not use lists internal structure which gives a quadratic speed. The algorithm consists of the following steps. 1. Initialization of the qubits in the divide zero state. 1. Uniform superposition of all basis inputs. 1. Execution of the oracle. 1. Application of Grover's diffusion operator, inversion about the mean. 1. Repetitions of step 3 and 4. 1. Measurement. In this code snippet, the Python library ipython.display is being imported to enable the display of images. The purpose of this code is to print out the source of an image, which is indicated by a URL provided as a string. The image is not shown here in the code, but it is referenced in the code as slash input slash quantum image slash grover underscore list dot jpg. The code is likely part of a larger script or notebook where the image is displayed, and the URL source is printed for reference. This code snippet serves as a reminder and citation for the source of the image, which, in this case, is from an article on eweek.com discussing the importance of organizations being prepared for threats posed by quantum computing. To start with, this code installs two necessary packages, Qiskit and PilotTechSync. Qiskit is a quantum computing library that allows users to create, manipulate, and execute quantum circuits. It provides a comprehensive set of tools for quantum circuit design and simulation. PilotTechSync, on the other hand, is a library for visualizing quantum circuits. It allows users to produce latex code that represents quantum circuits, making it easier to present and share quantum algorithms and circuit designs. By installing these packages, the code ensures that all the required tools are available for quantum circuit manipulation and visualization. The provided code snippet primarily revolves around the creation and potential usage of a list named my underscore list. Initially, my underscore list is declared with 13 distinct numbers. This list appears to serve as a database or a collection of elements that will be utilized for some operations, possibly searching, as hinted at later in the code. Interestingly, the code also contains a much longer list, which is commented out. Commented out code is not executed, it's often present for explanatory purposes or to provide alternative versions of a certain operation. This larger list seems to possess a repetitive sequence of numbers. The significance or reason behind this repetition isn't clear from the snippet, but it provides an alternative set of data that could be used in place of the initial 13 element list if uncommented. Finally, the last line of the code is a comment that indicates a future intention, searching for the number 7 within the list. This gives a hint about the purpose of the subsequent code, which is not provided in the snippet. The comment suggests that the list, my underscore list, will be used in a search operation where the goal is to locate the number 7 within it. In this code, we have a function named the underscore oracle which takes an argument called my underscore input. The purpose of this function is to search for a specific value. Inside the function, there is a variable called winner which is assigned the value 7. The function then checks if the my underscore input value is equal to the winner value using an if statement. If they are equal, the function sets the variable response to true. Otherwise, it sets it to false. Finally, the function returns the value of response. Overall, this function acts as a simple search mechanism to check if the given input matches a predefined value. In the given code, we have a list of elements called my underscore list. The code uses a for loop to iterate over each element in the list. The enumerate function is used to get both the index and the value of each element during iteration. Inside the loop, there is an if statement that checks the result of calling a function called the underscore oracle with the current element as an argument. If the result is true, the code prints a message indicating that a winner has been found at the current index, using string formatting to insert the value of the index. It also prints the number of calls to the oracle so far, by adding one to the index. After printing the messages, the code breaks out of the loop, stopping any further iterations. This means that as soon as a winner is found, the loop will be terminated and the code will exit. In this code, we start by importing the necessary libraries for quantum computing. The main library we're using is Qiskit, which is a comprehensive open source quantum computing framework. We also import additional libraries like Qiskit.visualization for visualizing quantum circuits, Qiskit.tools.monitor for monitoring the progress of a quantum job, and matplotlib.pyplot for creating plots. Next, we enable inline plotting by using the magic command percent matplotlib inline. This allows us to display the plots within the Jupyter Notebook or IPython session. 
Overall, this code sets up the required environment to work with Qiskit and perform various quantum computing tasks. The code snippet defines an oracle circuit, which is a key component in quantum computing. The oracle circuit is a quantum circuit object created with two qubits and named oracle. It is designed to perform a controlled Z, CZ, gate operation between qubit 0 and qubit 1, meaning that if qubit 0 is in the state 1, it will flip the state of qubit 1. The circuit is then converted to a gate using the to underscore gate function. It can be visualized using the draw function to see its structure and connections between qubits. In this code, we are creating Grover's circuit. To run this circuit, we need a backend, which is specified as the state vector underscore simulator in this case. This defines the simulation method to be used for running the circuit. Next, we create Grover's circuit itself using the quantum circuit class. It is initialized with two quantum bits and two classical bits. We then apply the Hadamard gate on both the qubits of Grover's circuit using the H method. The Hadamard gate is a fundamental gate in quantum computing and it is used to create superposition states. After that, we append the oracle to the Grover's circuit using the append method. The oracle is a quantum operation that represents the problem we want to solve using Grover's algorithm. In this code, the oracle is specified but not shown. Finally, we draw the Grover's circuit using the draw method with the MPL parameter specifying that the output format should be a matplotlib plot. This allows us to visually inspect the circuit and understand its structure. In this code snippet, a job is created to execute Grover's circuit. The job is executed on a specified backend, which is not indicated in the code. Once the job is complete, the result of the execution is obtained using the result function. The result is then printed to the console. It is not disclosed what specific information is contained within the result, as it could vary depending on the specific implementation of Grover's algorithm. This code provides a basic framework for running Grover's circuit and obtaining the result. In this code snippet, we are working with the state vector of a quantum system. The result.get underscore state vector function is used to retrieve this state vector. The state vector represents the quantum state of the system, which contains information about the probabilities of different states that the system can be in. After obtaining the state vector, we use the np.around function from the number py library to round all the elements of the array to two decimal places. Rounding the elements of the state vector can be useful in certain cases, particularly when dealing with experimental or computational inaccuracies. By rounding the values, we can have a better understanding of the approximate probabilities associated with different quantum states in the system. In this code, a reflection circuit is being created. This circuit consists of two qubits and is named reflection. The circuit starts by applying a Hadamard gate to both qubits, followed by applying a poly Z gate to both qubits. Then, a controlled Z gate is applied, where the first qubit is the control qubit and the second qubit is the target qubit. Finally, another Hadamard gate is applied to both qubits. The circuit is then converted into a gate using the to underscore gate method and is visually represented using the draw method. In this code snippet, a reflection circuit is being appended to Grover's circuit. The Grover underscore circ dot append reflection 0, 1 line adds the reflection circuit to Grover's circuit and specifies that it should be applied to qubits 0 and 1. Following that, the Grover underscore circ dot measure 0, 1, comma, 0, 1 line measures the qubits 0 and 1 in order to extract the final results. Finally, the Grover underscore circ dot draw output equals MPL line generates a visual representation of the combined circuit using the matplotlib library. Executing circuit on state vector underscore simulator. In this code, the Grover circuit is being executed for a search on the state vector underscore simulator. This simulator is used to simulate quantum circuits and calculate the state vectors of the resulting quantum states. Once the circuit is executed, the result is obtained by using the execute function and passing in the Grover circuit, the backend, and a parameter for the number of shots. The result object is then obtained from the job, allowing access to the counts of each outcome. Finally, the counts are printed using the print function and visualized on a graph using the plot underscore histogram function. This graph provides a visual representation of the frequency of each outcome in the search, executing circuit on actual IBM computer. In this code, we are connecting to the real quantum computers available at IBM. We first import the IBM Q module, which allows us to interact with their quantum computers. Once we have imported the module, we save our account credentials using the save underscore account function, passing our credentials as a parameter. Then, we load our account using the load underscore account function. After loading our account, we retrieve the provider, which is responsible for managing our access to the quantum computers. We can retrieve the available quantum computers, also known as backends, by calling the backends function on the provider. Finally, we loop through each backend and print its status using the status function. The status is retrieved as a dictionary using the to underscore dict method which allows us to see the current status of each backend. This code helps us check the status of the quantum computers and ensure they are available for use. Executing circuit on IBC underscore chasm underscore simulator. In this code, we are using the IBM Q experience simulator, specifically the IBC underscore chasm underscore simulator, as our backend. This allows us to execute quantum circuits on a simulated quantum computer. 
We then define our backend as backend underscore chasm using the get underscore backend method from the provider object. This will be used later to execute our circuit. The main part of the code involves executing Grover's circuit, which is used for searching. We run the circuit once, specifying that we want the result in the 11 state. The execute function is used to run the circuit, with the Grover underscore circ circuit and backend underscore chasm as the arguments. We also specify that we want to take only one shot, meaning we only want to run the circuit once. After running the circuit, we get the result using the result method on the job object. From the result, we extract the counts using the get underscore counts method, which gives us the number of times each state was measured. Finally, we print the counts to the console, showing that we only needed one call to the oracle to find our result, with the state being 11 and the count being 1. We also plot the histogram of the counts using the plot underscore histogram function. This allows us to visualize the distribution of the counts on a graph. Executing circuit on actual quantum machine at imc underscore keto. In this code, the Grover's search algorithm is being executed on an actual quantum machine called imc underscore Santiago. The specific backend being used for this execution is imc underscore keto. The Grover's circuit is being run only once, and the result is expected to be in the state 11. The code then retrieves the counts of different states from the result and prints it out. Finally, a histogram plot is generated to visually display the counts. This code provides a practical example of running a quantum algorithm and analyzing the result. References 1. https colon slash slash kiskit.org slash textbook slash ch dash algorithms slash grover.html 1. https colon slash slash www.quantum dash inspire.com slash bazy slash grover dash algorithm 1. https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equal sign eoh 3 jqa 55 a 1. https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equal sign 0 rpfwzj 7 jm 0 1. https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equal sign hk 6 bblutg who the code snippet provided simply prints a message to the console when executed, the program will output the message notebook completed. This can serve as a helpful indicator to let the user know that a specific task or section of code has been successfully executed. It is a simple yet effective way to keep track of progress and confirm the completion of a task within a notebook or program.